Okay, we're starting. Welcome everybody to the class. Aloha and Tanya. I just want to mention something that we, last week we spoke about Magda Ani. And um, there was one thing I left out that I realized afterwards that I want to mention today. We said the first thing you open up your eyes in the morning, you say Magda Ani Lefanecha before you get off the bed. And then you wash the Tilas Yadayim. It's brought down in Chabad custom that when you say Maida Ani, you put your hands together like this and you bend your head down. So look, it looks a little goyish, but we were first, don't forget. You put your hands together, you bend your head down and say Maida Ani Lefanacha that way. And there's a story about this called when the previous Rebbe, the Friedrich Rebbe was a little boy his father said, the Rebbe Rashab said to him, any questions you ask, you should ask me. Don't ask other people. Ask me the questions that you have. So when he came a little bit older, he was still a kid, he writes. He asked his, his father, the Rebbe Rashab, why do we put our hands together and bow the head when we say Maidani? Why do we do it? So his father said to him, that really you shouldn't be asking questions. You should do it because that's the way you're supposed to do it. And you don't ask questions. But because I told you that you can ask questions, therefore I'm going to answer your question. The Rabbi Rashab called in his, 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 his servant. His name is Rabbi Yasef Mordechai. That was his name. And this Rabbi Yasef Mordechai was 80 years old. A very simple Jew, but an 80 year old Jew. And the Rebbe Rashab said to him, the Martha, Rabbi Yasef Martchai, tell me, how do you say Maidani in the morning? Okay. He said, I put my hand together, my hands together, and I bend down my head and I say Maidani. So the Rebbe Rashab asked him, why do you do it? Why do you do it that way? And he says, I don't know. When I was a little kid, that's the way they told me to do it, and that's the way I do it. So the Rebbe Rashab said to his son, the Friedrich Rebbe, this goes back tradition all the way back in Yiddishkeit, and the main thing is you don't ask questions. This is the way you're supposed to do it. You need to do it. And, the, and the Rebbe Rashab did not answer him, by the way, why, um, why he did, does it that way. Okay, that was with my Ani. But I just want to mention that tonight's class. We are, yeah, I'm going to ask my location. I'm going to send it to you. Okay. You have to mute. Everybody, please mute yourself. Um, I uh, just want to mention that tonight's class is dedicated by the Beisha Mataban and family for his mother's yard site, Malka Bravs Yitzchok, whose yard site is tonight, and the Nisham should have an aliyah. If anybody ever wants to sponsor the classes and have a birthday anniversary or yard sites, uh, whatever, please uh, contact us and we'll do it. Okay. You have the same thing in your phone, Sima. Back, everybody has to do it. Sima. I don't see Sima, I, uh, right now there is Rabbi Schusterman class live. Do you want? You have to close, you have to mute yourself. You got okay. it, Simon. Back to Natilis Yadai, I mean, back to uh, Natilis Yadai in the morning. Okay. We discussed. Simple, listen to me. The way it works is very simple. You have to mute yourself, please. Menu, right? Like copy, copy. No, 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 no. I don't know how to mute it. Is it, is it, is it? Say coffee. Your, uh, okay, I'm asking everybody to please mute your phone. Okay. When you when you say by the Ani in the morning, send a text to your Spanish lady. You text it in English, and she gets it in the, and it comes out in Spanish. Will somebody please? Okay. Read? I want to call out names, but I see his phone. Oh, you have it. But by me, by the text, right? His when phone. Somebody? He right. his phone. Okay. I can unmute everybody particularly. Okay. So, he said that he tells you die in the morning. He tells you die in the morning. Goes as follows. 
You pick up the cup in your right hand and you wash him by the bed. You pick up the cup in your right hand, you transfer it to the left hand, and then you wash alternately like we learned last week. Now, Treb explains the reason for that. Now, Treb explains the reason for that is because uh, you want to take off the tumor starting with your right hand. So you pick it up in the right to take off the tumor, you hand it to the left, and then you begin washing alternately the various different ways. Left-handed people, like we said last time in some ascetic calls, the left-handed people wash the left hand first and then the right hand. So they do everything reverse. Now, before somebody washes Nagal Vasar, you're not allowed to touch your mouth, your nose, your eyes, your ears, not the private parts of your body. You shouldn't touch food before washing Nagavas. And we mentioned that last week, that that applies to Jews. Goyim that touch the food, even though they don't wash Nagavas, Dal Rebbe says it's not a problem. Uh, now, the question in Allah is, what happens if somebody does touch food before Nagavas? Before they wash their hands, they touch food. Are you allowed to eat the food or are you not allowed to eat the food? According to Halacha, you are allowed to eat the food. You are permitted to eat the food. Some people are masmid or pikabala, but according to Halacha, you're allowed to eat the food. Some students say that if you're able to rinse the food three times, for instance, let's say you touch the fruit, so you could wash it three, three times, and then you're able to eat it. If it's a food that you're not able to wash, then halachically, you're allowed to eat it. You don't have to uh, do anything. Next, there are certain things that need natilis yadayim. Rabbi Shisterman, can I ask you a question? What? Um, when you do the anatilat yadayim, um, can I use that same water to touch my eyes and my mouth before saying modani? The water that you wash on your hands, not in the pail. The water that you wash in your hands and not tummy. And you can wipe your eyes and wipe uh -huh. it up. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now, there's certain things that you need to wash your hands, but they don't necessarily need to be with the vessel. And I'm going to mention a bunch of things. And I'll mention that some of the things many people have a custom to wash with the vessel. For instance, um, when you get up from bed, you go out of the bathroom, or you go out of a bathhouse or a shower which by the way in, includes if somebody walks into the mikvah, even though you're not doing anything, you're just walking in, but it's an area where people are undressed, halachically you have to wash your hands when you go out, even though you didn't shower, you didn't do anything. You still need to wash your hands. If you cut your nails, you need to wash your hands. You take a haircut or you cut your hair, you need to wash your hands. You take off your shoes, you need to, if you touch the shoes, if you touch them with your hands, you need to wash your hands. This last Marital relations needs to wash your hands, to wash their hands. If you scratch your head or you touch any parts of the body that has, that's normally covered, the then is you need to wash your hands. You don't need a daily and you don't need a bracha. Some people, some people are strict. Some people are strict. Some people are strict that they will wash their hands with a vessel. When some people do it every time they go to the bathroom, even though halachically you don't need to. After cutting your nails and cutting your hair, most people have a custom they will wash what they call negel vasa, they wash with the vessel alternately like they do for waking up in the morning, but they definitely don't make a bracha, and halachically you don't need it, you need to wash your hands, but you don't need actually with the keli. But again, a lot of people are strict, even when they go to the bathroom, when they come out of the bathroom, they wash their hands, they wash their hands with, um, with, uh, without, with the keli without a bracha. Um, Okay, now, ideally, and we're going to get into getting dressed and taking a shower in, in a second, or taking a shower and getting dressed. But the best thing, halachically, 
to do is like this. You get up, you wash the Nagavasi near the bed. You wash the Nagavasi near the bed. Then you get dressed, you take a shower, whatever you do. Bottom line is when you're finished, when you're finished getting dressed, or shower, dress, whatever you do, then the custom is you go to the kitchen sink and you wash your hands properly. You wash your hands properly, being dressed, and again, hold the cup in your right hand, give it to the left hand, wash your right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, and then you make the bracha al netilas yadayim. Bad custom, the bad custom is, and this is what the Rebbe Rashab writes, and this is the Rebbe brings down is our custom. And you wash again by the sink, because you didn't make a brachi yet on the tilas yadayim. By the bread, by the bed, you didn't make on the tilas yadayim. Number one, you have the nebel vaser there. You have the water there, which is impure. You're not dressed. You know, you didn't rinse your mouth. You don't, you don't make a bracha then. After you shower, after you get dressed, then you come into the kitchen or wherever it is, and you wash your hands properly. The custom is, the custom is, the custom is that when do you make the bracha? You make the bracha according to Chabad custom is, you wash your hands, you dry your hands, and then you separate your hands and pick them up level with the temples of your head, and you make the bracha, with your hands dry. So when you're washing again at this kitchen sink, you pick, you wash your hands properly, you dry your hands properly, and then you pick up your hands after the hands are dried, and you say the bracha of al What? Where does the Ashkiyotzer come from? Ashkiyotzer. If what? If you go into the bathroom right after you woke if up. You, you go up, you say Asher Yotzer after the Negevah, when you make the wash by the kitchen. We're going to get into oh. Asher Yotzer. We're not there yet. Okay, next din is like this. Uh, the dinim of getting dressed. And it's important to realize, it's important to realize that Torah, as we mentioned in the introduction to Shulchan Aruch, is called Halacha, the way a Jew has to go. Because a Jew is following and connecting themselves to Hashem. And like we learned, you connect yourself to Hashem, not only when you learn, not only when you daven, not only when you do mitzvahs, but whatever a Jew does, they connect themselves to Hashem. And therefore, the Allah is, Torah dictates, Torah dictates the life of the Jew from the second they open their eyes in the morning, like we learned Maida Ani, until the minute you go to sleep at night, that's on a daily basis. Torah dictates the life of the Jew from the second you're born until hmm. you die and afterwards. Hmm. So the Torah dictates the entire life of the person, how they're supposed to behave. So therefore, when the Torah speaks about getting dressed, the Torah speaks about showering, there is the Torah way of doing it, the way Hashem wants us to do it. For instance, if a person takes a shower, okay, what can Torah tell me about taking a shower? The Torah says, Halacha says like this, if you're washing your whole body, the first thing you wash is your head. The head is called the king of all the limbs, the melech of all the limbs. So the first thing you wash <clears throat> when you get up in the morning is when you're showering, you wash your head. Then you wash the right side, your right hand, then your left hand. Your right foot, then your left foot. Because again, right is more important than left. If somebody is left-handed, they wash the left side of the body first, and then the right side of the body, because their left hand, left hand is their right hand. But a normal person, you're taking a shower. So how, what, what's Taylor say how to take a shower? You wash your head first, and then you wash, if you're washing like right hand, left hand, you wash your right hand first, then the left hand, right foot, left foot, and so on and so forth. The same thing is when a person is getting dressed. 
When the person gets dressed in the morning, there's a lot of halachas concerning clothing. Number one, clothing should be modest. I don't only mean, Shulchan Aruch says, it doesn't only mean in how much of the body is covered. You know, you have to cover certain parts of the body rather than um, being kept a bit uncovered. But even the style of clothing that somebody wears has to also conform with modesty. It's interesting in Shulchan Aruch, at the end of, in Yardadea, when it speaks about not following in the ways of the Goyim, you'll find a lot of interesting codifiers there. Some opinions say you're not allowed to wear black. Another opinion says you're not allowed to wear red. Another opinion says you're not allowed to wear green. Another opinion says you're not allowed to wear white. And that, you name the color, there's opinions say you're not allowed to wear. What does that mean? So the codifiers say clearly, in a place where the gun wore black, Jews were not allowed to wear. If that was their color, the guy representing the guy, you wouldn't be allowed to wear black. Nowadays, everybody wears everything. So as long as it's not loud, as long as it's not uh, showing off, as long as it's not immodest, because again, modesty and immodesty does not only mean in the way you're dressing, how much of the body is covered, it means also, you know, the type of clothing that you wear, it should be loud, and so on and so forth. I remember, this is what I heard, that in the 60s, they first came out with the mini skirts. And then they came out with the maxi skirts. Those of you that were around those years, not too many of you were, but they came out with the maxi skirts. Somebody told me then, I don't know, I didn't see it in writing, I didn't, you know, I was told, that some girls from Stearns College asked the Rebbe about wearing the maxi, which were the very long, they were like cleaning the floors, right? So somebody, this is what I was told, that some girls from Stearns College asked the Rebbe about wearing a maxi dress, and the Rebbe, because the hair is very tzniyistic, you know, it goes all the way down. And I was told, again, I didn't confirm it, I don't know, but this is what I was told many years ago, that the Rebbe said you shouldn't wear it because that's the Goyish style that the Goyim are starting to wear and you should stay away from it. This is what I heard then. Now, even when a person gets dressed or undressed, there is a concept in halacha of doing it in a modest way. What does that mean in a modest way? A person shouldn't just expose themselves publicly, even in the bedroom, I'm saying. You can't say, okay, I'm in the bedroom, nobody sees me, Hashem sees us. Yes, Hashem sees you even under the covers. Halacha says we do as much as we able to do to try to be as modest as possible, best on our ability. Okay? And the same thing when a person puts on their clothing, again, you put on the right hand first, the right sleeve, then the left sleeve. The right leg, then the red, uh, left leg, or by women, whatever they're wearing, stockings or whatever it is, you put on socks, you put on the right foot, then the left foot. We Take, could do that. And here's an interesting halacha. Taking off, doing reverse. Hmm. You take off the left sleeve, then the right sleeve. You take off the left foot, again, because the fact that you're leaving the right side longer shows that right's more important. So you put it on first and take it off last. So that again shows the, the uniqueness and the importance of the right side. So when you get dressed, and Bukhal also in Allah it's mentioned, when you get dressed, you get dressed top to bottom, and when you get undressed, bottom to top. You dress top to bottom. Whoever it is, please mute yourself. You, you dress top to bottom, and you undress bottom to top. You dress right and then left, and then you put left and then right. Now, there's another, a few interesting dinim as far as also getting dressed goes. It said Can you I should ask not you a question? Wear... What? Can I ask you a question? What? Okay, uh, wedding dresses. Everybody wears white wedding dresses. Are we, are we, can we also wear white dresses, white yes. wedding dresses? Yeah. Okay. 
I hope you personally don't wear an, uh, any more wedding dresses. Not, okay. Next. You're not allowed to wear something inside out. Oh. Sometimes for a joke, you know, you get dressed, the people wear something inside out. It's brought down in Aloha. If you wear something inside out, it's kosher l'shikha. It's going to make you forget your learning. The same thing, it's brought down. You don't put on two garments at the same time. And you don't take off. Halacha says putting on. In the Maimed, it says in the middle of Rebbe, also you don't take off two garments at the same time. <laughs> you don't put on two garments at the same time. You don't take off the garments at the same time. Why? You, you do this. You forget your learning. It's kosher l'shikha. It makes you forget your learning. Um, uh, now, Poskim right that that doesn't apply to shoes. Shoes, in other words, let's say you, Californians don't know what this is. It's something called galoshes. Well, let's say you have a shoe uh, and a, you're wearing galoshes. And then you could put them on together and take them off together. By shoes, it doesn't matter. This is what the pus can write. Um, but as far as getting dressed, uh, you shouldn't put on two garments at the same time. You shouldn't to take off two garments at the same time. And um, you shouldn't uh, put it inside out. Okay? Another important thing is that the Jewish garments have to be cleaned. The Gemara says in this Bradan and Shulchan Aruch that a scholar that has what's called the Revav al Bigdei, which is actually a stain on his garment, is Chayev Misa, is liable for capital punishment from Hashem. Why? Because he's disgracing the name of Hashem. People say, look at the way that Torah person dresses. So it's very important halachically, now Allah mentions this, that people have to make sure their garments are clean because otherwise it can cause a chil Hashem, a desecration of, a, of Hashem's name. Um, okay, that's it basically with the uh, garments. Um, there is a din also that's brought down over here that you have to wear what's called a yarmulke. You have to wear a hair, head covering. Now, it's interesting um, in some versions of the Alter Rebbe, Shulchan Aruch, which was censored by the, the Russian government, so they took out certain things they didn't like. Technically, a person, a man, not a woman, a man has to wear a hair covering at all times. The Gemara says that the mother of the, the famous sage of the Gemara, Rav Nachman by Yitzchak, the stargazers told his mother that your son is going to be a thief. He's going to be a thief. So what did, she, what did the mother do? She made sure from then on, the kid always covered his hair. And he grew up to be, why? And she said, you should have a covering on your head to realize there's something above you, which is Hashem. And therefore, by that, he grew up to be, instead of being a thief, he was the famous sage of the Gemara, Rav Nachman by Yitzchak. In fact, the word Yamoka, Yamoka is actually two words, Yare Malka, fear of the king. So when you say Yare Malka, Yare is fear, Malka is the king. Yare Malka, when you say it fast, it's Yamoka. But the reason why the head covering by Ashkenazic Jews it's called Yamoka because it's actually an Aramaic word, Yerei Malka, the fear of the king. Now, according to Halacha, because the Goyim don't wear a kippa, they don't wear, the, the men don't cover their head. So according to many opinions, and that's the way the Alter Rebbe holds also, that it's biblically forbidden not to wear a head covering. Because by not wearing a head covering, you're doing it because you want to follow in the footsteps of the Goyim, and therefore you'll be transgressing a negative commandment that says, sehem leichu, that you're not allowed to follow in the ways of the non-Jews. Another interesting halacha, and we'll finish up with these two halachas, and then we'll go to Tanya, 
Allah says like this, you shouldn't walk with your head up in the sky as if to think, uh, to give the impression that you are, you're God's gift to the world. A person has to walk you with humility. It says you should walk with your head down. But Allah says don't mean down because then you bang into the wall. It means you walk with a little bit of bittle with your head looking down. Obviously, you should be able to see who's opposite you or because the Gemara says, Shlema Malach said that, that even a fool, you can tell a fool by the way they walk. And you can tell a, a holy person, a great person also by the way they walk. So therefore, it's very important that a person should walk with humility, uh, not their head up as if they showed, you know, they, they own the world and they God's gift to the world, but they should walk with humility. The last thing that we're going to learn today is that Halacha says a man is not allowed to walk between two women. A woman is not allowed to walk between two men. Uh, the same thing, by the way, a dog and a pig, not that people are compared to dogs and pigs, but a person should not walk between two dogs or between two pigs, or have a dog walk between two people, or a pig walk between two people. You have to do the best you can. Now, according to many opinions, that doesn't apply to close family. Let's say a father can walk with his wife on one side and his daughter on the other side, even though he's walking between two women, but by immediate family, this whole concept doesn't apply. But otherwise, when you're walking in the street, Allah has said you have to be careful not to walk between two women, or a woman shouldn't walk between two men, or animals walking between the two of them, uh, because uh, science, whatever, whatever the reason is, whatever the reason it says in Allah of why you shouldn't be doing it. Okay, we're going to leave it here now, and we're going to go to Tanya. Rabbi, I just want to ask you another question. Yeah. If I'm cold, can I can my husband give take off his jacket and let me wear his jacket home? Yes. Well, okay. we didn't learn about men wearing women's garments yet. That's a whole separate section. But okay. if you're cold, you're allowed to wear your husband's capota even. Okay. And and wear it home if you want to be warm. Okay. Thank okay. you. And the other yeah. thing, what about sitting on a plane? Can you sit between two men, Khasr Shalom on a plane? Well, I want to get into that whole issue now. <laughs> I want to get into that political issue. Rabbi Shulzim, sorry. When you was mentioned, when you was mentioned, you were running with hands together, bowing down. You can't do that during the day. You only do that only in the no, morning. Only they made the ani, which is in the morning when you wake up. That's it. Okay. Uh huh. In time, and how about if you're just little... lying down, not sitting up? What? You could sit up a little bit and do it. If you if you said what. All right, so you can't do it lying down, you have to sit up. Okay, you sit up a thank you. Bit. Yeah.